what is up everybody welcome back here to the channel we're doing another fun edition of our freshman spotlight so what we like to do is you like to break down a freshman in college football that is actually tearing it up or has come on strong here down the end of the season like i've been talking about this class as a whole for the freshmen have kind of underperformed this season but uh we talked about eugene wilson last week we're gonna be talking about texas running back cj baxter jr and what he has been doing and now with an injury to johnson brooks looks like he's going to be a vocal point in this offense moving forward for the rest of the season so we're just gonna be looking at his advanced stats looking at little pff grades going over his recruiting profile where he came out of and then what we can expect from him moving forward this season so hang on hit that like and subscribe button after the intro and i'll dive into cj baxter <laughs> All right, full disclosure on the CJ Baxter trend. He was my running back one coming into this class. So we do rankings here at our Patreon. Um, and, you know, we talked about like, hey, who's the running back class? And I've talked about him. So I, I've been pretty high on CJ Baxter. So that's just a full, you know, just a full disclosure uh, in terms of, you know, me and my history with CJ and in terms of like why I've liked him and whatever. So when you're looking at overall in his recruiting profile when he came out, he was pretty much everybody's running back one for on three and 247 sports. The two, those are the two really recruiting sites that I, um, you know, look at and, and talk about and, and really like I trust a little bit more. Um, Rivals ESPN, Rivals is good. ESPN's not. So like that's what the area. So you see him here. He was very highly sought after prospect, five star kid. Um, you know, it talks about when he emerged on the scene, he played three different positions. He played running back, linebacker, defensive back, which is pretty crazy when you think about that, when he went in the state playoffs. Um, and then he just looked good. 1700 yards, 26 touchdowns. Um, when he was a junior, he looked really, really good in terms of how his explosiveness was. Um, and then he picked Texas, which a lot of people thought, Hey, maybe he would come in there and kind of be the guy initially right away. That didn't necessarily pan out, but now we're starting to see a little bit more. So let's talk about what he's doing right now. So by the numbers, when you're looking at his advanced stats, he's slowly been coming on 258 yards after contact, 19 missed tackles for us, eight explosive runs. Those are 10 or more yards. And in 74.9 elusive rating, something that that's the area that we want to see him get a little bit better at. I think his elusiveness and or lack thereof, you know, for lack of a better term there, um, is something that he's going to improve on with time. I don't know if CJ has. So the thing with CJ is like, I don't He probably has it. He, he does have that elusiveness there, um, but he's been learning the game. It's taken him a little bit longer. When you're watching him, and I've, I've watched him play this year a lot because I really have liked him, um, he's been just slowly learning it, like learning vision, understanding kind of where his blocks are going to be. Um, he takes what the defense gives him, which has been good. He's been up and down a little bit on the year, though. So he has 87 attempts, 390 yards, and three touchdowns. Um, he played a pretty good game against Kansas, you know, early on in the year against Oklahoma. Wasn't great. Houston, he started coming on a little bit after that Oklahoma game, six carries, 42 yards, a touchdown. But these last two games is where we're really starting to see him kind of get a little bit of love, right? We can get some volume and get some usage there. So against Kansas State, he had 10 carries for 90 yards and a touchdown. And against TCU, he had 18 carries, 61 yards. And those are the things now that we're seeing him within this offense that, hey, they like him. They're starting to trust him. Him. I think the big thing is, is the coaching staff now. Like, so the coaching staff is really, really starting to trust him and give him the ball and find that usage. And that's something that you have to love when you're looking at like, Hey, projecting forward for CJ, like, what is he going to be? If the coaching staff is starting to love him, they trust him now. And they have some huge games down the stretch, which we'll talk about, but that's a good thing. So that's what we've seen from him. Now, when we're just looking at the numbers overall, just kind of going over like, where is he running the football at and, and where is he finding success? So this is one of those, my favorite things from PFF. I like rushes by direction. So you can really kind of see where he, you know, where they try to get him the, the ball. And, and so when you're looking at overall where his attempts, most of his attempts are coming off of the end, right? Left in, right in, you'll see it there off the tight end. So, that's the area like they like to get him on the outside. And I think that for CJ is one of those things because he has that speed and that explosiveness, he's going to be able to get to the outside there. Um, and you'll see where his missed tackle force come from. It's when he gets into space off that right end and he's able to make that first guy miss. Right. And that's kind of where you'll see the coaching staff really sees where, where he's at. I will say though, you know, even though he hasn't had a ton of attempts like middle, right, right off the center, uh, his that's where his yards after contact really come uh, come into play. 
Um, and he and he has that ability. You you've seen that, but that this is just gives you a general idea. This also can show you where they believe their strength of their offensive line is, which is on that right side. But off that right tackle is something. Hey, that's where he's gonna like to run. Um, and this is something for his development moving forward is like, Hey, he's got the size. Let's get him on the inside. Let's have him kind of be able to be that inside back. And that's the thing with his vision. I want to see that's the improvement that I hope that we see there. Now, as far as his future outlook, let's like talk about this season, right? They have two big games left: Iowa state and in Texas tech, two games that they should win, but Jonathan Brooks was on crutches this last game and Jonathan Brooks has pushed himself into maybe being running back two or three of the class. That's a huge loss for the Texas Longhorns, right? If he's out for the foreseeable future or the rest of the season, it's up to CJ to kind of carry the load here. And I think that is what you're going to see against Iowa state and Texas tech. He could have two very, very big games and push his value very high up in terms of just fantasy, but also just in terms of the class in itself, he could really solidify himself as being that guy for Texas next year but also in this in his in his actual rookie class and in his class of overall and when you look at the depth chart overall for them like you know he's the guy next year when you're looking at brooks probably being on keelan robinson is there Jaden blue uh Jaden blue excuse me but overall like yeah he's the guy and he's going to be the guy moving forward i think that's a, that's what they envisioned i really do think texas envisioned him being kind of like hey brooks is good all right but we're going to have him moving forward he's going to be with arch you got to remember too that they're going to the sec i think cj actually fits the sec right thinking of competition also that's another thing when you're looking at draft outlook hey he's gonna be playing sec talent as far as like, you know, who they got coming in from, a, I always like to kind of talk about the recruits at the running back position. They do have Jared Gibson. He's the running back too at his position right now, 5'10, 200. Jarek's a, Jarek's a good back. So I do think Jarek can get some run a little bit next year. Christian Clark is a three star that they got coming in, not like anything amazing. They have like a top 15 class, but I do think Jared Gibson could give him a little bit of a run. I think those two are going to be very, very solid backs. But just like this, I think they're recruiting for the SEC. When you think of like what they got coming in, how that, you know, what those defenses look like. They're going to need guys like this, but I think CJ could be the dude, right, in that offense and on that depth chart. And I also think you have to like what they have at the offensive line position, right? Like their only senior technically is Christian Jones, the right tackle, but they have Cameron Williams behind him. They have a very, very solid offensive line. Like that is the, the hogs up front are going to move this kid, and he could be also their guy next year, right? A.D. Mitchell and Xavier Worthy are probably leaving. Um, when you think of that, maybe Quinn Ewers, I don't know what's going on there, Jatavian Sanders. So they're losing a lot of kind of weapons. So he really could be their vocal point um, in, in this offense and someone that they need to really, really lean on, which should excite you if you are a C.J. Baxter guy, right? So overall, I think he can solidify himself as the running back one of his class. He is He has the path is open for him now. I think he's getting more comfortable in this offense. And I think we're going to start talking about C.J. Baxter as being a possible first running back one taken in the NFL draft in a couple of years once we start seeing that. So shout out to CJ Baxter, Texas Longhorns that have a few, huge few games coming up here to see if they can sneak into the playoff. So that'll be a big part of it. And Baxter is going to be a big part of that area. So appreciate you guys. I'll check you guys next time.